Welcome to Colorado Inside Out Post Game, a special web exclusive production here on Channel 12. Let's get a quick take on the judge in the Aurora Theater shooting case postponing the trial again this week. The state mental hospital responsible for the defendant's psychological evaluation requested more time, and District Court Judge Carlos Samore moved the date to July 22, 2015. Alicia Caldwell from the Denver Post, you have written a lot about this topic. What did you make of the change? Well, the, the sanity evaluation is really the linchpin issue, I think, in this case. Um, there are so many witnesses. There's so much evidence. I don't think that's really going to tip a jury one way or the other. But what they do with that evidence is, is very much will be influenced by the decision or the, the evaluation that comes down. Now, Colorado has some different laws about um, uh, sanity evaluations, and I think the judge is being cautious, and properly so, in allowing uh, the mental hospital down in Pueblo to really take its time and come to a solid conclusion. Um, it, it, a man's life is at stake here, so I'm, I'm not surprised by that. Patty Cahoon from Westward, do you, do you, were you of the thinking that this was going to be delayed one way or the other? I mean, there is, we're going to be two years and two days in the actual crime, and that may even not even happen. What do you think? Well, in most of these cases, and we don't have a lot of them in Colorado, the delays continue. I'm, I think I'm glad we don't have this coming up in October because it would have been a real circus and it wouldn't, would have become part of the election, which mm -hmm. we're already going to be talking about the death penalty anyway, but we don't need to talk about it in October. Now this will be postponed till next July, maybe. We've already had one assessment that it, which is under dispute, which is why we're having the second one, so you can understand why the judge is taking his time. But you do wish, you do understand at a certain point where death penalty opponents are like, you know, he had agreed, they'd floated a plea in which he would agree, he would confess as long as the death penalty was taken off the table, and we would now be sitting here knowing where James Holmes was going to spend the rest of his life and how, and instead this, we're going to be in limbo for years to come still. David Copel from the Independence Institute and DU Law School. Does this delay factor into the, the legal part of it? Is that part of the case eventually saying, hey, we need to take even more time, so does that cast dispersions on, uh, on the research, or is, is that kind of time just the, what it takes to I, find I think that the, the time is appropriate, and for the, uh, the people who feel that it's not appropriate that James Holmes spend 50 years in jail after having terminated the lives intentionally uh, of a dozen people, uh, you want the trial to be done right. You know that uh, if there is a capital verdict handed down by the jury that Holmes's lawyers will use every procedural mechanism to delay for perhaps decades, if they can, uh, his execution. And so the trial judge is right to say, if this case is going to go, this case will go on, a, on appeal, I want the most solid, strong record possible, that we did everything right uh, at the trial level, and so whatever the courts of appeal do, they don't have to say, oh, we got to send it back because something got missed at the trial level. And as Alicia says, the, the, the only issue in this case, really, is his sanity. Uh, it, it's not like there's any doubt that he did it with extreme premeditation uh, and, and malice uh, to the extent that he was, if he was, sane enough to deform those mental states. So it, it, it's right to do the sanity thing as, as perfectly as possible and have a, a solid factual foundation uh, when the appeals begin. Penfield Tate, attorney at Greenberg Traurig, a longtime state lawmaker. Uh, wrap it up for us. You know, I agree with everything that's been said. And this case is interesting because it really, I think, highlights the cost benefit of seeking the death penalty and I think it crystallizes the conversation for us because we need to understand what we're talking about here. Number one, no one's claiming he did not do this. He did it and we all know he did it. All of the maneuvering, everything that's happening now is because it impacts ultimately what the penalty may be for this crime. Everything is involved. Everybody's being procedurally safe. They're taking all of their time. They're being deliberative because at the end of the day, the question is whether he gets put to death or whether he spends the rest of his life locked up somewhere. He's not going to be out in society again. We know that. So I think part of what we have to ask ourselves as a community is what do we want? Um, do we want vengeance? Do we want him dead? Or do we want him kept away from the rest of society forever and a day? And, and if we want the latter, we need to rethink how we do some of these things because we're spending a lot of time and money and energy on someone who we all know is guilty. The only question is what to do now. 
That's all the time we have for Colorado Inside Out post game this week. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. For everyone here at CPT12.org, I'm Dominic Dizzuti. Thanks for watching.